everybody, my name is Chris Harris and I'm from AlloryTutors.com and welcome to this video on successive ionization data. Now in this video we're going to look at um, an example, well this is an example of periodicity, um, except what we're going to do is we're going to remove um, successive electrons from the same atom. So for example if we take an atom and we just keep on taking electrons from it, and every time we take an electron, we're going to measure the energy. Now, obviously, well, obviously you can't do that in schools or colleges, um, but what we can do is we can use data there where somebody else has taken that information and they've given us the data, and we have to identify the unknown element. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is look at two different types. We're going to look at ones with um, data, um, where they'll give you like a set of numbers, and then you have to use them numbers to try and identify an unknown element. And we're also going to look at one with a graph as well, um, or plotted uh, results on a chart. Um, and then from that, we can then identify different shell structures, etc. So we can tell a little bit more about that. Okay, so what we're going to do um, is basically look at um, for a very specific thing. We're looking for a large increase in ionization energy. That's the really important thing. Um, and the reason why is because this shows the removal of an electron from a shell that's much closer to a nucleus. So if you imagine you've got an atom, you've got the nucleus in the middle, um, and then you've got your shells which develop around the nucleus, um, and then shells are split up into subshells or orbitals. Um, but in this case, we're just really looking at the shell, really. We're looking at a very general term. Then, obviously, if you're trying to move an electron from something that's really close to the nucleus, i.e. the first shell, that's going to take an incredible amount of energy to remove electrons from that shell because they're right near to the positively charged nucleus. And remember, it's the positive charged nucleus that holds these electrons in. And obviously, the further away we go from the nucleus, um, the less energy is needed to do that. And we call that, obviously, um, atomic radius. So the bigger the radius, um, the, the larger the atom. And if you're removing an electron from something that's really far away from the nucleus, it's not going to take that much energy to remove it. Um, but we can also call this um, shielding. Um, and the more electron shells you've got between the nucleus and the outer electron shell, um, the um, more shielding you have. And the more shielding you have, the less energy is required to remove that electron. So we're going to be talking a lot about shielding and atomic radius, etc. And you've got to get these words in when you're describing or explaining what's happening here. Okay, so we've got the first set of data here. And you can see this is the ionization number. So this is just how many electrons we're removing. The first electron, the second electron, the third electron, etc. from an element. Um, and they've given us the energy of um, ionization energies of different um, values. So you can see um, the first electron only takes 799 kilojoules per mole of energy to remove the first electron. From the second one, it's 2,420. From the third one, it's 3,660. And then from the fourth one, there's a huge jump. All of a sudden, to remove that fourth electron, we need a ridiculous amount of energy to remove that electron. Now, this tells you that this fourth electron must be sitting in a shell that's closer to the nucleus. In other words, we've gone into a different shell. These first three here, yes, they are getting higher in energy. That's because we're removing an electron from something that's positively charged. So that's going to take a little bit more energy, but the big jump is here. So we've removed the first three. They must be in the same shell because the energies are, are similar. But the massive jump comes from the fourth electron. So this must be from a shell close to the nucleus, like I say. So then all we have to do is, um, we've been told that it's a period two element. So all we have to do is look along our periodic table, find period two, which is the second row down, um, and we're looking for an element with three electrons in an outer shell, and the fourth one is in a shell closer. Now, if you look really carefully on your periodic table, um, you should find that boron is the element that this data represents, because it has three electrons in its outer shell, um, and this is saying that the amount of energy required to remove them electrons is pretty straightforward. So that's the answer, which is boron. So I'm just gonna put that there. So this one is, let's do that with a different pen so we can see it. This one is boron. Okay, right. Easy, straightforward. Right, let's look at this one, another type. We've got ionization energy, as you can see, um, along the left-hand side here. We've got the total number of electrons removed uh, on the bottom here. And you can see here we're removing more electrons. Um, and we want to work out what the element is. Now, this is not an ion, we've been told that. Uh, or we, you would be told that if it's an ion, because obviously it behaves differently. So we're going to assume that this is an atom or an element. Um, and so we've got the data here. Now you can see, the first thing you can tell 
is um, just look at the number of electrons. You can see that we've removed 13 electrons from this element. Um, and so all you have to do is look for an element with 13 electrons in. Um, and this one would be um, aluminium. So that's pretty straightforward. So this one's aluminium. Okay, we then also, because obviously that's pretty straightforward, but then also we have to then annotate it with the shell types. And you can see that we've got these various jumps here. And I'm gonna kind of, kind of illustrate them and show you where they are. Each one of these represents a shell. Now, aluminium is in group three, so you'd expect it to have three electrons in the outer shell. Its outer shell is in the bottom left-hand corner because this is effectively the area where we've got the lowest ionization energy. And remember, it's easier to remove electrons that are furthest away from the nucleus. So these three represent the third shell of electrons. So this is the third shell. If I can write properly, there you go. That's your third shell, so remove the first electron, the second, the third, fine. Then there's a big jump. This big jump is because now we're removing an electron from a shell that is much closer to the nucleus. And in, these, in this shell, we have eight electrons in this shell. Now remember this shell will be split into subshells. So here you would have uh, your S and P shells as well. So this would be your 2S and 2P shell that would make up this. But this is effectively the second shell. So this is the second shell, whoops. Let's just put that on there. There you go, second shell. Uh, or effectively, this is going to be the uh, the 2s and 2p subshell, these eight electrons make up. And then when we get to this stage, we then keep on removing electrons. Remember, this is very theoretical. It's really difficult to remove electrons from something like this, especially all of them. Um, then we've got the last two here. Now, these two are the ones closest to the nucleus because they've got the highest ionization energy. So this is the first shell. These two are sitting in the first shell. Um, so first shell. Uh, and these electrons must be the 1s. These sit in the 1s orbital. Whereas these ones down here, these ones will be sitting in the 3s and 3p because obviously aluminium's got one electron in the 3p orbital. So what we've done is we've annotated our graph with the shell types. We've justified why we know it's aluminium. We've explained and the different shells, where the structure is. Uh, and we've also explained these big jumps as well. So the big jumps are because the electron is much closer to the nucleus. We therefore have a um, higher, um, uh, well, we have a, a higher ionization energy because we have significantly less shielding or we have less shielding as we go across the period because we're removing electrons from shells which are much closer to the nucleus. Um, that's it, simple as that. Bye-bye.